Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another travel video. So it is very windy out here today, so I hope you can hear me, but we are actually still on the ship. We are porting today in Cartagena, Spain, but it's a late port day. So normally we'll port six, seven in the morning before we wake up. Today, we're not porting until 11. So time to get up, eat breakfast, do lots of stuff before we even dock in the port. So we actually have an excursion planned today. We are going to a Spanish horse farm. Yes, I picked this excursion, mom did not. So I'm very excited. We're supposed to see kind of, it's a breeding farm. So we're really able to see the stallions and the mares and the babies. They're kind of, their whole program, as well as a little Spanish horse um, dance, like dressage. So I'm very excited. It'll be interesting to see how it goes, but I think I might have to put my hair up because it is windy as hell out here. So I will see y'all there. Let's go. All right, y'all, so we made it on the bus. It was actually pretty easy today. We, um, we reported much later than normal. Good morning. And so Good instead morning. of calling each number, like ones, 20 minutes later, twos, they were just like, one through five, one through seven, one through nine, everybody at once. So we are on the bus. We are going to the horse show. So are you excited, Mom? Oh, totally. Mom loves horses. This was one of two excursions I picked, so we just have to deal. See you all there. Names is Isidoro, and uh, we are going to be your transfer guide in this little trip. Cause this time, I'm not your guide, okay? The really the guide is the other uh, my, my my colleagues inside the other bus, okay? Uh, her name is Vera, but <laughs> be, uh, believe me, it's the best guide in Cartagena. So <laughs> you are uh, lucky people, okay? Anyway, in the transfer time, we are going to introduce the the city, the museum, the resources, and when we. Uh, are located close to the Conesa Ranch. I'm going to be uh, going to do a, a little introduction, okay, about the, the this trip, okay? okay? Well, and I told you the mass is mandatory, okay? Uh, inside the bus, inside the Conesa Ranch. The transfer time uh, lasts um, more or less five, ten minutes each, okay? The rest of the time we are uh, inside the Conesa Ranch. Well, in front of you, the city of Cartagena. The city center is very close. The city center and the main street is very close to the city center. Only walk straight, tap on the left. In five minutes, behind these enormous trees, the city center, five minutes walking, no more. In other cities, for example, in, in Alicante, for example, if you want to visit the city center, you have to take a saddle bus. But in this city, it's not necessary. It's very close.
All right, we made it to the ranch. I might have to do a voiceover on this video because I have to have my mask on, but bus four, bus five, there's quite a few of us here, so see how it goes. So she was saying that these are two of the brands that they use on their animals. You can see it on the ground as well. And it is a family ranch. She said there's over 175 acres. This little guy is so friendly. He thinks we're here for him. Inscribe its body in a square, the height and the width 
are approximately the same. You probably have seen other horses that are a little bit longer. This is um, their confirmation. Looking at the lines of its head, I will move that to the side. Have a look at the line here and the curve. I'm exaggerating. You can see how the muzzle sort of curves inwards like that. If you are familiar with horses, Arabian horses are exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. Their muzzle sort of comes outwards. This is a convex curve coming inwards. And I mentioned Arabians because both Arabian and pure Spanish breed are the only pure blood horses in the world. Let's continue with their neck. They have oops, a broad, mm -hmm. strong neck, short back, strong hindquarters, and long legs that are capable of producing lovely round movements and learning lots of different gates. And another thing that we can see is about the grooming. Have a look at its lovely long forelock, beautiful mane, and full and natural long tail. Why am I telling you this? I'll give you a little tip to make a difference very, very quickly and find out whether it is a stallion or a mare without having to do that, <laughs> without having to wear glasses if they're out in the field. And it is about the grooming. All the studs in this breed, traditionally, this is something that happens in every ranch, they are allowed to grow their manes, forelocks and tails full and natural. And for the mares, it is completely the opposite. No forelock, no mane, and a special treatment for their tail. So if you see them out there, and you will have a chance to have a very close look very soon, you will notice that they do not have these lovely manes, or forelocks, or tails. So that is the tip. Now you all know. Another, if it is a male, the brand will be on the left side. If it is a female, they are branded on the right hand side. And let's talk about those brands and how here they are. How we do them and when we do them. So here are the irons. This is one of the patterns, big one and tiny one, exactly the same drawing. And I'll show them to you. Here we are. No more hot branding at this ranch. Branding at this ranch is done with liquid nitrogen, which is cool, but it is not as aggressive and not as painful. When do we brand a horse? Only after it turns three years old, when it has passed all the tests that allow it to be inscribed in the stud books. So when we are 100% sure that the horse is going to be registered, we are ready to brand it. Branding is not mandatory. So we can do it or not. Here at the ranch, they're very proud. They're very, they are a renowned um, ranch. And so they do it. But say you want to buy a horse, and you have your own brand at your ranch. Mr. Pedro, please do not brand my horse. And they will not brand it, okay? If we decide to do so, we have to select. As I said, on the left thigh for the males. And nicely clean and shaven, we are going to dip the, bra the brand into liquid nitrogen for 15 minutes. And then, according to the color of the base coat. We're going to leave it on its skin 8 seconds or 12 seconds. What does it depend on? If the color of the base coat is a light one, as is this case, we're now going to talk about the colors of the coats, we leave it longer so that we kill the hair follicle and no more hair is born from there, which is the case of mine. If it is a dark base, we can leave it 
only eight seconds because what will happen is the hair follicles will no longer produce pigment but the hair will still grow it will be white and that will outstand hmm, on the basic color so that is how it works we have a little brand as well and the little brand is used in a secret place only at this ranch it is not something that is traditionally done in other ranches they may or not do it okay so now i'll show you starting by people up there here show you the secret place for this so again think see if you want to to have the tattoo let's see if you see where it happens yes so it is right there the puppets have oops, the little brand and before i let go have a look at the hawk in this side and this side you can compare and see that one is like swollen like much much bigger what happened is that when Milo was two years old he got into trouble and he was out in the fields and he got a splinter in the hole and in less than a week's time it was swollen infected and the vets suggested sacrifice but mr pedro over there he had a good eye for the horses and he said this is going to be a lovely stud we are going to give it a chance so he asked the vets to make a splint for its leg and for six months my lord wore the splint it was leaning against a wall they were feeding him a lot of work and then when that was removed physio some therapy and eventually he recovered completely so he is our survivor that has nothing to do with the dna of the horse and so he is working as a stud another important thing before we start talking about breeding is the color of the coat the color of this coat is called dapple gray. Although you don't see gray and you don't see dapples. <laughs> but it was born dark, dark brown, like the little ones that you see over there, like the darkest over there. But as it carries the gray gene, eventually it is going to start going gray, like myself. <laughs> Between its fourth and tenth year of age, a horse with a grey gene will become white. We cannot call it white. A white horse is born white. Grey horses go grey as they grow. It used to have dapples. They are gone. You're going to have a chance to see a dappled horse and you can imagine the evolution. Things that we do not see, but we can feel. The character of the pure Spanish breed horses, very gentle, very noble, extremely cooperative when it comes to breaking in. And they learn, as I said, lots of different equestrian sports. They are noble, they are gentle, and so they are used nowadays, little by little, more and more, for equine therapy. They are very good hmm, working with people who have special needs, but they are expensive. Here in Spain, they can be used for handling cattle, both in and outside the bull ring, oh, but they are expensive again for that. They are mainly used for exhibition and dressage. You know how they do those lovely gates. But folklore festivals, you will see them with the ladies with ruffled dresses riding them or pulling carts. That is another way. Here, Milos' job is to produce semen. So on a daily basis, it produces semen and it is artificial insemination that is carried out over here. So we eventually sell the horses when they turn three, not before, because remember, they need to be inspired in the And I'll show you, last thing, start thinking about questions. They will be microchipped when they are a month old, and if they pass the tests, 
the number on that microchip, this is a scanner, we could scan it and, and have the beep, a long number will appear on the screen and that number will be appearing on its passport. Passport has its genealogy, its vaccines, and I'll start here, no picture. Remember, it has been changing colors. But passports for horses have a page where there are little schematic drawings and you have to jot down the markings that make each horse unique. Markings could be white markings, and markings could also even be a cowling. Hmm? Things that will remain the same forever throughout the lives of the horse. So those are the photos. So here I got some help. Arabian horses' characters are much more frisky, more, let's say, hot blood. And um, the confirmation mainly by looking at the head. What I explained, the head of this horse hmm, is convex like that. The muzzle comes inwards and the Arabian muzzle comes outwards. So they're just by looking at the head, but also the lines hmm, on the back. The Arabians are a little bit like more horizontal and these have a little curve. Okay, so what Mr. Pedro was saying, reinforcing the fact that I told you these are the only two pure blood horses, hmm? Arabian and Spanish, so there is nothing in common between them. Other breeds have lots of things in common with the Arabians and others have lots of things in common with the Spanish. Hmm? But between themselves, there's nothing in common, okay? I hope it answers the question. Love you. Uh, more questions? Okay. How long will he be working? Okay, the lifespan of these horses is between 21 to 25 years old. And they start working when they are three, males and females. Males finish working whenever they want to. Does that ring a bell? And females until they are around 19 years old. Hmm? Although they could, they could be pregnant when they are 20, 21. But 18, 19 would be the age. Okay? Average lifespan. Average lifespan, 21 to 25 years. Hmm? That is what they will do. Where will he go after he stops working? Where will he go after he stops working? After the horses stop working at the ranch, they stay at the ranch and die at the ranch. Okay? So that is taken into account. Why are the mares four locks and manes cropped? It is a tradition. Uh, so I don't, this is like when my mother said, yes, because yes, that is the tradition. And it has been done like that for centuries, okay? So it is the way it is. Are, are many of the stallions and or mares from here shipped um, out, of, out of the European Union to the United States or something? Yes, sir. Are many of these horses shipped out of the European Union? Yes. Lots of the horses from this ranch are sold to the US, to Mexico, and Colombia. Those are three important buyers of horses from this ranch. Okay, so now that all the questions are done, we are going to go over and take a picture of Milo, the stallion, and then we will move to the back paddock to talk about the mares and the babies, the fillies and the foals. Colts.
you can already see the very round movements that the two colts have. The colts are a month old. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. And the mothers, Magna, the dapple grey. Remember, I told you I was going to show you a dapple grey. Marla, this is her first offspring, her first little baby. So she's only four years old and she was born here at the ranch. And uh, Aliada is the other one. She is eight years old and she was rented, I do that, from a stud farm that is owned by the state of Spain. <laughs> Traffic you will notice that she's got a different yeah. brand on her thigh. I know. She comes here to spend a year or two to bring fresh blood into the stud. Same thing can happen sometimes, bringing sperm from other horses because we need to have fresh blood coming in. Look at the grooming that we talked about. Yeah. No forelock, no mane, and a special treatment for their tails. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you notice that from the dock backwards, eight to ten inches have been shaven, clean, mm -hmm. without any hairs, because we don't want those hairs to interfere during labor, mm -hmm. because that is their job, to give birth to a foal or filly every year, since they are first covered at the age of three. Gestation period is 11 months, okay? Oh. So after 11 months, when the mm -hmm. little ones are born, in an hour's time, they're up and moving around. And we start counting the mare's period starts. In a fortnight, she will be able to get pregnant. And so in a fortnight's time, they are going to be scanning. And as soon as they know that the follicle is mature, they will inseminate her. And she will be pregnant. Both of them are already covered. We do not know yet if they are pregnant so far. So they will be scanned in probably a week's time. What? Uh, how long do the little ones stay with their mums? Weaning takes place at the age of six months. Weaning is, for those who do not handle this vocabulary, the time when they are separated from their mums and no more breastfeeding takes place. What they do is they Aww. remove the mothers from the group and because they belong in a group, the little ones can stay with their peers at least until they are eight months old or it is the month of October when they will be set apart, tied up, first contact with robes and men and buckets. And until they are a year old, that is what will happen in their lives. After that, we've got the group of yearlings and then when they are two, we separate them by gender. When they are two, the males are allowed to start growing their manes and forelocks. So by the time they are three, they look like lovely, handsome studs. Okay? Mares can be up to 100 kilos less when they're not pregnant than the males, and they can be up to a hand shorter and still be within the standards. Ah, these two babies are 32 days old, a month old, hmm? both of them very, very young. And they are here, set apart from the others, just for the sake of the tour, so that you can see them. Okay? Eventually, they will go back to the big group. What about... Yes, yeah, sorry. If a horse doesn't meet the standards, which does not usually happen at this ranch, they already know that they have mm, very good genetics. If it doesn't meet the standards, it cannot be registered in the stud books. It will not be a pure Spanish breed and it cannot be sold as such. So the price is going to go mm, down. And here at the ranch, they might still keep it and use it to work or then give it to relatives mm, as lovely presents. I would love it. <laughs> Yeah. Here at the ranch, the horses are fed very good quality hay and barley. And then they go out 
often graze on the grass. There's a field out there uh, for a couple of hours every day. Okay, so that is what they eat. They should be eating between one to two percent of their body weight in roughage. That is what they should be eating. Right, so that is like between five to ten kilos, which is a lot. Hey, you're so light. <laughs> yes. Where are the other horses? Okay, the premises are large, big. So behind the house, there are big paddocks where the mares and the fold and fillies are kept. One is covered, the other one is not, and then they put that field there where they graze. The studs are kept in boxes. They are very good tempered, but they cannot be together. And so they have to exercise regularly, 45 minutes is what they do a day they are ridden but the mares just run out of the fields and they sort of naturally do their exercise you look listen and feel it in your guts okay We're, we're good. We can walk now. We're letting the mares and the yearlings out for their daily time in the paddock. Yearlings are next. Wow, wow, look at that. Yeah, there is a primella in this field. Oh, oh yeah, that's very trendy. I see a mom. She's beautiful. Some of them are pregnant and they are due next spring. And there is one who is um, skinnier. You can see her ribs. She has always been like that since she was young. She was the sexy one in the group. <laughs> See the difference on the undercoat? Um, she has pink skin. Uh -huh. As opposed to the white ones here that have dark skin. The black one, as you will notice, has another brand and she comes from the stud farm run by the state of Spain. Cartujano
So everyone's taking their last picture, headed back to the bus. So we will see you back on the ship. Whew. That has been a day. Okay, so obviously we are no longer at the horse farm. We're on the bus. We are back in our room. Um, so I thought it was a really good excursion. I know mom's not a super horse person. So as, okay. as a not horse person, what did you think? One to 10. It was very interesting. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing the horses and learning about them. They were very, um, knowledgeable. It was, I, I knew when we booked it that we would see the horses and we would get to see what they did. I didn't know that they would explain everything in quite so much detail so right. i did find that interesting and then they put on a show mm -hmm. for us i did like the show if you're going to book this excursion which i do think if if you're interested in animals at all it was very interesting yeah, it was very good. um pick a chair that's not behind the snack table <laughs> that's my number one tip um, the other thing I would say is while most of it, well, maybe a third of it, you were seated on um, the other two thirds of it, you were standing or out in the, the paddocks. So just keep that in mind. It wasn't bad, but it was rather hot. So just, and it actually was very comfortable. There was quite was, a bit of breeze. It was warmer but, than the other places we went. Yes. Yeah. I think because especially yeah. out in the paddocks, like there's no trees, you're just out in the sun. But so, I mean, we were in very, the southernmost part of Spain. Yeah. So. It, the sun was really hot, <laughs> but it was very interesting. I, the horses were obviously very well taken care of. They were very pretty. Yes. It was very interesting to me that, um, our tour guide on our bus only did the bus portions. And then there was the different tour guide when we got there, who was, I guess, the tour guide for the first bus. There was two buses. It was a bus and a half. She was very knowledgeable. But even more than that, Mr. Pedro, Pedro. she said? Senor Pedro. Senor Pedro, who was the owner of the whole ranch and his children. It was a family operation. He was there for the whole tour, yes. um, listening, making sure the horses were treated properly and oh, shown you. properly. And, you know, any questions that anybody had that she wasn't sure about, he was right there answering them. He just, he obviously didn't speak English, but our tour guide spoke both English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was interesting because I've, a lot of the tours mm -hmm. we've been on that were, um, family owned kind of things. It was just the tour guides, the family weren't there. So right. you could definitely tell this is, this is his baby, the whole farm, mm -hmm. all the horses, they are important to him. So and they had what about, they said they have 180 horses total. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, we are unfortunately We're all, packed up. all packed up. Today is our last day on the carnival pride. So we will be still doing some stuff in Rome and maybe London, but today is the last excursion on the ship. So I don't get to say we will see you tomorrow mm -hmm. on a different excursion. There are no more excursions. We'll be in Rome tomorrow. Yes. And then we and tomorrow's Sunday, and then we fly from Rome to London on Monday. And then we'll fly home. And then we fly home on Tuesday. So we are going again on another cruise next year all over Greece. Yes. So if you've watched any of these videos, if you have any recommendations or comments, questions, concerns for our next travel videos, mm -hmm. leave them down below. We'll see you then. Bye. Thanks.